Amazon just entered the AI coding ring in a big way by releasing their own AI code editor named Kiro. And it takes a brand new approach to coding with AI, one that makes a lot of sense to me because it mimics the way that I've been using AI to code inside of Cursor over the last couple of months. So today we're gonna take a closer look at Kiro and use it to build a full stack app. Kiro is a desktop application like Cursor and Windsurf, so to get it, you'll go to kiro.dev and download it. Now, when you open it, it's gonna look familiar because yes, it is another VS Code fork. And that is a good thing because that means you're gonna have all of the extensions that come with VS Code and you'll have all of the core development features that you're already used to. But Kiro is obviously gonna build on top of that and add all of its special features. So to get started, I'm gonna open a project. This one's gonna be called Dragon Roll. And Kiro brings us to this screen. So we have two options. We can either vibe or use the spec-driven development approach, which is really at the heart of how Kiro works. So we're gonna switch over to this because the core idea of Kiro is that before you build, you create this spec, which defines everything that you want to do. It's really what I've been talking about in some of my recent videos with document-driven development. It, it's really the same idea. Before you build out your features, you create a document that is going to define everything that needs to be built. And then Kiro is gonna actually help define and track the tasks so that the AI agents can do a much better job of actually implementing your vision. So let's work with spec and then I'll describe my application for Kiro. We are building Dragon Roll an application that is going to help dungeon masters run their D&D sessions. The first tool that we want to build is an NPC generator that is going to allow them to create characters that are a part of the world. The user should be able to specify the type of character that it is and any notable details, and we will use the OpenAI API to generate a full character description and background, as well as an image for the character. Please help me plan the full application and then we'll go from there. All right, and I'll submit that message and then it appears over here in the sidebar like your typical AI code editor. All right, so the first response was that they're experiencing high load, but let's try it again. Okay, here we go. Now it's getting to work. So here on the left, we see a spec get generated and this is going to be for this NPC generator, which is really a feature of the full product. And that's how Kiro operates, is that it defines specs for specific features in your product, so then you can have a specific design for how that works and the specific tasks that are necessary to implement that feature. So the first thing it asks us to do is to go ahead and review these requirements. So let's take a look at this. And by the way, a quick tip, if you press Control shift v it's going to actually show you the markdown in a much more user-friendly way. So reading through the requirements, it does feel like it's a little over-constrained and kind of difficult to read, to be honest, but I have some feedback, so let's see if we can modify this plan and then we'll move on to the next phase. Okay, it's made some changes, so let's go ahead and move on to the design phase. By the way, you'll notice that it's using Claude Sonnet 4 and it also has the agentic capabilities that you expect from modern AI code editors. So it's able to search the workspace, it's able to create files and so on. Okay, it has created the design for us. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna press Control Shift V again. So we get a nice little layout here. We got the front end, we got a Node.js back end, and we're gonna call the OpenAI API. That all makes sense. It looks like it's using some outdated models, so I'll let it know to update those. And then it has all of this testing, security, performance kind of stuff. So that seems pretty good. Let me give it some feedback and then we'll move on to the next phase. Okay, so I said overall it looks good, but let's make the following changes. No need for React Query, use Fetch instead of Axios, and then use the latest OpenAI models and ask it to search to see how to integrate with the Responses API. So one thing I'm noticing here is that it didn't actually perform a search. It just went ahead and edited the file. So I'm not sure that Kiro yet has search capabilities. So just something to keep in mind. So just in case, I'll go to the OpenAI website and copy the example they have for the responses API and paste that into Kiro. Okay, so now the design looks pretty good. Let's move on to the implementation phase. Now, obviously this is taking a bit longer to get to a working application than me just asking AI to build me a D&D &D app and then hoping for the best. But if I have specific requirements, if I want to build a real viable application, this is the approach that you wanna take. Whether it's in Kiro or in Cursor or something else, 
you really want to think through all of the requirements that you have and define those very well and then have the AI work on it because that'll give you results that actually match your vision and you'll end up with much higher quality code. Okay, so let's see what sort of task list Kiro has come up for us. First of all, it needs to set up the project. It needs to create the interfaces, the backend server. There's an integration. There's a lot of different tasks that are required, 18 tasks it looks like, to actually make this a reality. So I'll just review this task list and then we'll have Kiro get started. Okay, so now that we've finalized the task list, I can go over here and click start task and it will open up a new chat and actually start working through that. Okay, we got a command that we should run to initialize this project. Now, as you see here, the agent is reading the design, the requirements and the tasks. So there's really no like magic here, right? It's still an AI agent that is reading your files, that is understanding the context. But Kiro kind of creates this framework for guiding you through this spec-driven development approach. So I think it makes a lot of sense, but you could do this in a different code editor like in Cursor by creating these files yourself. Services experiencing high load, I'll just say continue. Okay, and it looks like it's doing a lot of work now. So we can actually take a look at some of these files. We'll probably have to install some of these dependencies and things. One thing I do notice though, is that it's creating this NPC generator backend and front end, and it's not really taking into account my whole application. So I think it might be thinking too far in the direction of features. And I hope that it doesn't try to build a new backend and front end for every feature that I try to ask of it. So it's just something to be aware of. And I think it would be helpful to actually start your project and then start creating these specs so that Kiro has more context on what you're trying to build. And now it's found some errors, but it's really cool because it looks like Kiro is able to see those errors directly. So I don't even have to copy paste it in here. That's pretty convenient. And all right, it looks like we have completed task one. <laughs> Let's see, I'm just gonna ask, how do I run the app? All right, we got the front end running. Okay, we got the back end running. We should be able to see this health endpoint. Let me check on that. Okay, NPC generator API is running. And then the front end should be over here. Okay, awesome. I mean, it looks super cheeky, but that's fine. All right, let's move on to the next task. I'm gonna go ahead and just close that. It looks like it's completed, task number two. Okay, I'm gonna keep rolling through these tasks and fast forward to the point where it's either done or it gets stuck somewhere. So we got to task four and here, Kiro seemed to get kind of stuck. It kept modifying these tests a couple of lines at a time, but I can see that there's still probably 200 errors left in this file. So I'm gonna have to manually intervene, but I also noticed that it's actually using the models we explicitly told it not to for this OpenAI integration. So I'm not sure that it's adhering to the original plan that it created for itself. But let's take this one step at a time. I'm gonna show you another feature that Kiro has, which is this agent steering. So I just asked Kiro to create these steering rules and it has created three separate files, one for the product, one for the structure, and one for the tech. Now, if I understand correctly, Kiro is going to use these to guide its development and they're kind of bigger picture guidelines for it to follow. So I kind of think of them as an extension of cursor rules and here I actually want to tell it to just ignore the tests because they're just getting in my way and I just want to build this MVP. Okay, so I made some changes to the steering to guide it away from writing these tests. And then I'm also going to update the plan. So hopefully it removes some of the testing requirements for the tasks. Okay, looks like it updated the task list and marked a couple of these things as done. So now I'm going to keep going. Okay guys, it's been three hours of me working with Kiro on building this app and we're finally at a point where it should work. But first I'm gonna do a security scan to make sure that we don't have any security issues in this code. And then we'll take a look at what the application actually looks like. It's easy to build features with AI, but finding security issues in your code is a whole new challenge, which is why I've been working on VibeScan. VibeScan is a product that will systematically go through all of your code to look for security issues and propose fixes for them. Soon we'll also be adding code quality and performance issues. So join our beta today. There's a link in the description and the first 50 users get 50% off for life. 
So let's take a look at what security issues Vibescan found in Dragon Roll. Okay, so it looks like we got some passwords written in the code. Here's a suggested fix for that. Although as I look closer, it does look like it's in the test folder, so that's probably okay. But as I review this, we also have these pop-ups and it looks like we are logging some private information. So there are definitely some issues to fix and we can get a prompt to fix those issues right here. And soon we'll be adding auto fixes as well. But let's take a look at what the application actually looks like right now. Here it is. After three hours, this is what we were able to build with Kiro. Now, there are some UI glitches, but it does actually work. So I can select these options and actually generate an NPC. And it has the description, it has the image. So that's great. I can't yet save the character because I never got to the tasks that actually save this to a database. It was simply taking me too long to build this out. Now, just for comparison, here's a similar app I built using Lovable with a single prompt. This took about a minute or two to build and yeah, it looks pretty similar. After a couple of iterations, I actually got it to look like this, which I would argue is better than the version that we got with Kiro. But let's discuss why it ended up this way and what I think about Kiro overall. So here's the thing. Kiro is based on some really good ideas. It's really important to have a solid plan and all of your requirements figured out before you build the product. But I think the product as it exists right now is significantly over-engineered and over-complicated. And it forces you into a particular way of developing software that may or may not make sense for you and the application that you're building. As I was working through these tasks, Kiro would regularly write hundreds of lines of tests, even though I tried to explain to it that I don't even want tests right now. I tried to use the agent steering to steer it away from writing the tests, but it did it anyways. And it actually ignored some of its own requirements along the way. Like for example, it used the old OpenAI APIs so I had to force it to use the new ones. And then later when it reviewed its own code, it decided, oh, these new APIs don't exist. So we should use these old ones. So, you know, there are issues like that. And when you run into that, it becomes really difficult to know how to proceed with a tool like Kiro because do you modify the original plan? How do you modify the plan? Is it something that you should put in the steering instructions or the agent hooks? It's not very clear. And then what happens when you wanna change your feature or you have new requirements? Well, I'm sure it's gonna iterate on the spec, but it's very difficult to keep specs in line with the actual code. And the fact that it requires you to have these conversations just means that you're gonna have some big drifting going on when you modify the files or somebody else edits something. It's just a recipe for disaster. And it's kind of funny because I was actually thinking about building something like this after I saw how effective this sort of document-driven approach is. But after a couple of weeks, I realized like it's way too complicated to actually maintain a system like this. You're much better off having a flexible interface where you can guide the AI in the right direction and you can create the documents that you need, but you sort of tune them depending on the situation that you're in. Kiro has a very, very prescribed approach here with the requirements, design, task list, and you have to kind of mold yourself into that approach. And what ends up happening is what happened to me. It took me three hours to build this super simple application and I was going through every single step but most of it was really over engineering and unnecessary. And like I said, when things go off the rails, then it becomes really difficult because now you have specs that are out of line with your actual code and it's unclear where you need to make changes and how to proceed. So my recommendation is take the core concepts that Kiro is going with and just use them in any other AI code editor that you're already comfortable with. You're gonna have a much easier time creating these documents yourself and having much more control and clarity over how your AI agent is working because you can just tag the relevant documents and then have it focus on that. You can tell it to focus on a specific section. Kira sort of forces you into a particular way of using these documents and developing code and that may not work for 
honestly most people. So I recommend you keep using tools that are more open-ended and give you more control over how your software is developed. Lots of good core ideas in Kiro, but overall it's just really over-engineered. If you want to see a way to use a similar approach inside of Cursor, check out this video where I will guide you through writing similar documents and then using them to drive your Cursor agents. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there. Take care.